Now we're gonna go ahead and install, create, and activate a virtual environment using a Python package called pip env. Now this is certainly not the only way to create a virtual environment. In fact, in the next one, we go into a deep dive on all a few different kinds of ways of creating virtual environments. But the purpose of a virtual environment is to make sure that our project's versions don't conflict with another project's versions, right? I have a lot of projects that use Python 3.6 and Django 2.2 and Django 1.11. I don't want them interacting or interfering with this project at all. So I use a virtual environment specifically for that. And I'm gonna repeat that over and over just to make sure that it's extra clear because sometimes that information gets lost in the cracks a little bit. So we're using pip env and all of the code for it exists here on GitHub. And you can go there and check it out if you'd like. There's various ways to install pip env. I'm gonna go through what I would argue is the simplest way to do it. And this is a very popular package. And there's a really good reason for it is it manages virtual environments, in my opinion, better than other ways of managing virtual environments. And then finally, we're using the Python package repository. It's called PyPy. So every time you use a Python package, you install it from PyPy. So um, that's typically what you'll do every once in a while. You do it from another source, but overall, that's where you'll be installing things. And that's what we'll be doing here as well. So the first thing I need to do is I need to open up a terminal window here. And I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that first warning. And again, you probably won't see that. If you do, you can ignore it, it's okay. Now, in terminal, what we do when we open it, we open to the root of our user's account on our system, right? So that's, that's by default, it always happens. And more than likely what you'll see is applications, desktop, documents, downloads, you'll probably see those things. I have a directory called dev, so I went in and said mkdir, as in make directory, dev, to hold all of my development projects. I do this all the time, right? So I always put my development projects in one place. You certainly can put them in documents or even in like file syncing services like Dropbox, but when you do that, it sometimes causes more issues than it's worth. So let's go ahead and CD into dev, and I'm gonna make my project in here. Notice I have a few other projects already, so I'm gonna make another directory, and I'm gonna call this just CFE proj, and I'll CD into CFE proj. Okay, so CD means change directory, um, and then make directory ls means to list it out, and then dir means, or rather pwd means where you actually are located. So this is the path as where our stuff is stored. Um, another way to think about this is if you open up Finder and you try to re-navigate to this, you would first go to your computer itself, go to the hard drive, into users, the user you're using, the directory that you're using or the folder you're using, and then that final folder, and there we are. Okay, so I need to install pip env. And the easiest way to do this is do python 3-m pip install pip env. And I'm also gonna install pip and just do dash dash upgrade. So you're gonna see this command fairly often. Um, in fact, you're gonna see this command even more often, right? You'll see pip install and then some package name. I actually installed two different packages here and I installed them globally. That is my entire system now has pip env and pip upgraded. Now I actually already have those things in there so I could also just do pip uninstall pip env. I don't wanna uninstall pip, I definitely wanna have pip. So I can uninstall pip env and there you go. Right, so now that version of pip env is gone. So if I wanted to bring it back, I would just do pip install pip env and that's it. It's not incredibly complicated as far as how that installation process goes. Now, pipmv has a new installation process as well. So something called Homebrew will allow you to install pipmv as well. So if you did brew install pipmv, that is another way to do that. I'm not gonna cover the brew setup portion right now, but that is something that 
does actually make things a little bit easier. But now that we have pip env installed, I can go ahead and say pip env. And this shows me something like this. If you get an error, a similar error to like, if I type out ABC, if you get this command not found problem, that's okay, you should try python3-m pip env. And that should give you that same object um, or same like kind of warning or commands or sort of guide on how to use pip env. Now, if both of those don't work, that means you didn't install it correctly or there's some permissions errors that you're having with Python, which is definitely something you just let me know in the comments and I'll try and point you in the direction of where you need to go. So now that we've got this, we just need to do pip env install and I'm gonna do period as in install in my current folder. I don't actually need that period there, but what I do need to add is dash dash Python in the version of Python I want. Now, before I actually write that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and open up, you know, another terminal window here and do Python dash V. This is what it will default to, is whatever Python version is under just the command Python. So I need to use Python 3.6 or rather 3.8. You can use either one. Um, and I will be doing that in more detail later, but for now, I'm gonna do Python 3.8, or really just Python 3, because that command should definitely use 3.8. So pip env install, that is the command you'll need to use to actually initialize this project. So after you do this one time, you typically don't need to redo it, but I'll show you what happens if you do. And do note that it says using library frameworks, python.framework and all this, like this is the path to where Python 3 is located currently and it's 3.8.2. Yours might be in a different location, that's okay. The main thing is this number right here. As long as that's the number that you wanted, that's good. So now that this exists, I can use a command called cat, that's C-A-T, pip file. So pip file is a file that was automatically generated when I ran this pip env. So looking inside my project, there it is right there. Um, you could open this up in a text editor as well to take a look at that. Uh, but the main thing here is that it has details about our virtual environment as you see here. So if you've actually used virtual env, the other part that's not there is the virtual environment stuff. So the question is, where is my actual virtual environment? It's stored and that's right here. Don't worry, no worries if you, you, you don't know what I'm talking about exactly. Feel free to watch that deep dive to, to get a little bit more of that information. But now that we've installed our virtual environment, we can run it with just pip env shell. So pip env shell activates this virtual environment. And to see this in action, well, there's a couple things that we can do. We could type out python-v, and what do you know? It says 3.8.2, and it's there's no three on here like we just saw, right? So on my main system, we had to write out 3.8 or just Python 3, right? So Python 3. So when the virtual environment's activated, it's gonna go off of whatever Python version you used to initialize it, which means that it's a lot more convenient. And it also means that every time I activate this virtual environment, like with pip, she pip env shell, I don't have to remember which version of Python it is. Right, I don't have to every single time say, oh, I already wrote all this code, so now I'm gonna do pip env install, and then the Python version I did, and what is that, I don't remember. Like, th those things you just don't have to do, because it's already in there, and it's inside of that pip file, uh, as I'm showing you right there, right? So that's showing that Python version. Now, to install things into this virtual environment, this is what you'll see more often than not, is pip install, and then whatever package it is. So let's say for instance, I wanna install Python requests. It's a very popular library. Let's go ahead and install it. I hit enter and hey, that actually works. That's because pip and pip env do work hand in hand with each other. But a better way to do this so that the pip file knows about it and that the pip env knows to manage this package, we wanna actually do a different command. But before I do that, let's take a look at the pip file again and we see that it, it only shows me the Python version, it doesn't show me any packages, those are the key parts here. And then if I do pip freeze, what I'll see is some things that are actually installed, like Python requests. So I'll go ahead and do pip env now, install, and then request. So the, typically 
about this. If you ever see pip install requests, just add env to the end of pip, and then it will actually install what it is that you're working with. Um, so now if we look at that pip file, what we should see is Python requests in there, and, and sure enough, we do. So again, if I scroll up a little bit, uh, the packages was empty, and now it's not. And granted, if you had that file actually open, you would see that as well. So another way to handle this is, well, first let's go ahead and remove that. So I'll do pip env uninstall requests. So this is gonna remove it from the virtual environment as well as from the pip file itself. So if I do pip freeze this time, um, I don't see requests in there. I do see the other items that were from requests, but I don't see requests itself, which is true for uh, the pip file as well. Okay, so this is how that pip file is describing that environment. So if we install something, it shows it there. If we uninstall it, it shows that it's not there anymore, right? So something else that you'll see from time to time is when someone does pip install requests, they'll make something called a requirements file. So pip freeze greater than requirements.txt. This command, all it does is take the result of whatever this command is and puts it into this file here. This is a uh, fairly conventional, but what that does then is it makes a requirements file. So requirements.txt. And you now see the, everything that's related to this project, all of the requirements that are related to this project. So pipemv can use that with pipemv install dash r requirements.txt. And this can also update your environment as well as your pip file. So if we do cat pipemv again, or rather uh, not pipemv, sorry, cat pip file, we see that those packages, all of those packages are now in there. So pretty cool. I mean, that is now our virtual environment. We are set up and ready to go. Um, I realized we covered a number of things here, but one of the things that we didn't cover was just sort of reactivating this. So let's go ahead and close out our terminal. I'm gonna activate and reactivate it a couple times just so you get familiar with it. Um, so let's go ahead and open terminal back up and we need to navigate to our project, which was in CD dev and then CD CFE proj. And then here is our actual virtual environment. Now, how do I know if this is activated or not? Well, I'm not positive, so it's really simple. You just run pipemv shell. When in doubt, just run pipemv shell. What's gonna happen if you are already activated? It's just gonna say, no action taken to avoid nested environments. Right? It's not going to activate a virtual environment within a virtual environment within a virtual environment. We don't have virtual environment inception here. So that's simple, right? Simple enough. If I need to deactivate it, I can just type out deactivate. If I want to install something without it activated, I can run pipemv install, you know, whatever it is that I need to install. Let's say, for instance, Flask. Don't worry, we'll get to Django. But there it goes. It's actually installing it into that virtual environment, into the correct virtual environment as well. And that's how pipemv really kind of shines among some of the other ones. Like I don't have to activate the virtual environment to install things to it, which is really nice. The last thing is I actually don't have to uh, activate the virtual environment to run anything either, which we'll see shortly once we get Django running. I'll, I'll definitely show you this, but that is showing you that we can also run different commands inside of that virtual environment. So that's pretty cool. And uh, another example of this would just be to run Python and we can just do dash V and it shows me that virtual environments Python. So a lot of good stuff with this, this Pippi and V stuff and, and definitely take a look at their documentation if you wanna learn more about it. But now we're actually ready to install Django and get that going.